Okay, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. And I'm deeply sorry that I wasn't able to attend the conference in person this time. I think this is the first MOF conference that I'm missing in my entire life. So uh, I really uh, apologize about this, but I would like to also say that I'm grateful to the organizing committee for arranging this online talk so that we could meet. I would like to specifically thank to Professor Stefan Koskel and uh, Ms. Sharon Samro for their great effort uh, in making this uh, presentation online. So I'm going to try to give you an overview of computational modeling of MOFs from design to applications. And I would like to start by acknowledging my research group because what I'm going to show you in the following slides are actually all done by my students. And I'm uh, very lucky to be surrounded by these uh, beautiful young minds. And I would like to thank to all national and international funding agencies for supporting our research, especially to ERC starting grant for supporting us in the last five years. So my uh, research group is working on atomically detailed modeling of metal organic frameworks, mainly for gas separation applications. We also do biomedical applications, but today's talk will be specifically focusing on gas separation. And our aim is to help directing the valuable efforts, time, and resources to the promising materials uh, by using Monte Carlo molecular dynamic simulations and DFT calculations. I wanted to start by showing you how I met with MOFs. So this is a photo uh, from 2007. Uh, my PhD advisor David Scholl actually wrote this note to me when we were meeting with him at uh, Carnegie Mellon in his office. So he took a white paper and he wrote, I heard something, metal organic frameworks. He put it into a box and he said that there are thousands of papers related with MOF synthesis, hundreds of papers related with gas absorption in MOFs and about five papers related with gas diffusion in MOFs. So he said, your PhD thesis is going to be modeling gas diffusion in MOF membranes. This is how I met with MOFs uh, back in 2007. In 2009, I was uh, back to my home country after my PhD to Istanbul. And since then, I have been still working on modeling of gas absorption and diffusion in MOFs. So when I graduated, there were 4,000 soft MOFs, and today in the morning when we check Cambridge Structural Database, we have 100,000 soft MOFs which have been synthesized. And we also know that there are millions of hypothetical materials. So the question is, which MOF would be good for a target application? How are we going to choose the best MOF for a desired application among millions of candidates? As I said in the beginning today, I will be speaking on gas separation, especially CO2 capture, hydrogen purification, and air separation. And for all these uh, applications, we have many candidates. So we need to do some computational screening modeling in order to identify the best materials. So if, if this was a TV show, I would say previously on MOFs, because I really want to give you a historical overview. So uh, I hope you can see the laser point. I will start from 1995, and a few slides later, we will be in uh, today's date. So in 1995, experimental studies reported gas absorption in MOFs. These experimental studies are, of course, accurate, but they require a lot of time. And when we look at the published papers in 1995, one paper was publishing their gas absorption isotherm for one MOF or for two MOFs. And um, these were generally on CO2 or methane or hydrogen absorption. So we were able to see experimental absorption isotherm of gases uh, for MOFs. 
And in 2003, the first GCMC study was actually performed. So this, this talk is really emotional for me because I was introduced by Professor Snur, uh, and he is actually the one who performed the first GCMC study for methane absorption in MOFs with Professor uh, Tina Duran, Professor Lev Sarkisov, and Professor Omar Yaki. Their Longmuir paper showed the experimental uh, methane absorption uh, for MOFs. And after they are this pioneering study in 2004, we started to see a lot of simulation papers reporting gas absorption for different types of MOS. Of course, time requirement for the simulations is significantly less than uh, experiments. Uh, but again, in 2004, we were still looking at a few MOS. We weren't able to study tens or hundreds of MOS. So, uh, as the number of molecular simulation studies increase, we started to see the MOFs can actually outperform traditional porous materials such as activated zeolite or activated, car uh, activated carbon and zeolite. And we show that MOFs can really outperform these traditional materials in terms of CO2 or methane uptake, which actually gave us the idea that these materials can be very useful for gas separation. And in 2012, a hypothetical MOF database was created. And in 2014, computation-ready MOF database was generated. And I think that was a game-changing event. With the introduction of the core MOF database, uh, we started to screen large number of materials because uh, previously we were taking the crystallographic information file of materials, we were feeding them to the simulation, but this wasn't an easy job. With this database, Professor Snur and his co-workers actually provided us the opportunity to directly use the crystal structures ready for the simulations. So 2014 is an important date because number of MOFs has significantly increased. We started to know about 6,000 of new synthesized materials. Computation ready MOF databases appeared. Of course, in the last decade, computation power has been also enhanced. So it came to a point that high throughput computational screening can be done. And with this approach, you can study large number of materials, thousands of materials in a short time. And of course, uh, before me and after me, several pioneers in the simulation and computational modeling of uh, metal organic frameworks have gave talks or they are going to give talks. And uh, thanks to them, we had the opportunity to use uh, force fields specifically developed for MOFs, flexible force fields, again, specifically developed for flexible materials. So what I'm trying to say that since this year, we are uh, seeing a very rapid increase in the accuracy and sophistication of the high throughput computational screening approach. So my group also started to use this approach. And uh, our project's logo is actually very similar to what Professor Yaki introduced the first day of the conference, from molecules to society. So what we are trying to do, we are getting the MOF materials. We are modeling them for different applications, especially for CO2 capture. We are identifying the best materials using the simulation results and certain performance metrics that I'm going to talk in a few seconds. And then we are trying to uh, direct our experimental collaborators to these materials, which can at the end create a new separation technology and economically, industrially, and environmentally friendly separation technology. So we really try to go from molecules to society in order to, for the benefit of the society by using high throughput computational screening approach. So what type of gas separations we studied? In the beginning, we started with CO2. This was our uh, project topic. But with time, we started to use this approach to study hydrogen purification or chemically difficult separations like air separation. And very recently, in the last two years, we are looking at SO2 and H2S capture. And I wanted to give the message that in the beginning, like 10 years ago, we were looking at 
single component CO2 absorption with Monte Carlo. Today, we are able to look at multi-component gas absorption with Monte Carlo for thousands, millions of materials. So not only for CO2, but capture of CO2 from a kind of mixture, which is difficult to simulate. And meanwhile, several different computation ready MOF databases appeared. And we also try to compare those databases to find opportunities and challenges related with the, uh, their usage in the molecular simulations. So now I will try to give you some results from this high throughput computational uh, screening. You know, whenever you submit a paper, there is always a reviewer too. And our reviewer too always asks for comparison of the simulation data with the experiments. So uh, there are several figures from different studies. In each figure, you see the simulation data that we obtain on the x-axis and the experimental data that we collected from the literature, if possible, from different research groups and different MOF materials on the y-axis. And for gas uptake or absorption selectivity or membrane selectivity, we compare our simulations with the experiments first to show that this approach is working. Uh, you know, each of these comparisons has a different story. Sometimes simulations don't agree with the experiments. We keep these materials, we try to understand these materials using more sophisticated simulation techniques. Uh, sometimes they agree well, but the idea is that this uh, computational screening approach based on Monte Carlo and molecular dynamics is actually working pretty nicely to make a prediction. We generally have a limited amount of experimental data, especially when it comes to the gas diffusion. So once we show that this methodology is working, we then start to study whole database. So every single point that you see on these figures is representing a MOF. If you're an experimentalist, probably your MOF is also here. And what we try to show that which materials are showing better or higher selectivity compared to others. For the first couple of years, we really focused on selectivity because we were thinking that this is the most important criteria. But later on, a lot of research groups introduced different types of performance metrics like capacity, working capacity, absorption performance score, regenerability, delta Q. And uh, we show that in fact, focusing on selectivity is not a good idea. We were doing it incorrectly. Maybe we should focus on the combination of all these metrics. For example, in the bottom, you can see regenerability of MOFs. And as you can see, most MOFs are not highly regenerable, especially if they have a high selectivity. So therefore, focusing on different performance metrics is really important. The other thing that we try to show one MOF can be good for particular separation, but of course, very naturally, it may not be good for another gas separation. So, so we really try to show the materials, the common materials, which can be used for different uh, applications very nicely. For example, capturing CO2 from methane, but at the same time, showing nice selectivity for flue gas separation, etc. So I think uh, this type of figures are really giving the message that uh, 10 years ago, we were just producing CO2 uh, absorption isotherm, but today we can look at different gas mixtures and millions of materials with the same uh, simulation technique. So of course, when you show the data like that, it's really difficult to understand which MOF is performing how. Therefore, we have an, a website where we put all our raw data. So if you have a MOF and if you know its ref code, obviously you can search it and you can find what we predicted by simulation. And I believe this is important in high throughput computational screening because in this way, uh, people can regenerate your data, reproduce your data and see how uh, the results will change if they change the simulation input. So after, using this higher throughput computational screening, 
we started to get a lot of data about structure and performance, and we tried to find, we tried to show a relation, but this was very, very difficult. So two years ago, we were ending the manuscript saying that there are some structure performance relations, but we are not able to really analyze it. So we show figures and we try to provide some insight, but the, the insight wasn't a quantitative insight. For example, in this figure, the outer circle is representing all MOFs that we studied. The inner circle is representing the top 15 MOFs that we identify. And those are pore size, porosity, metal type, density, physical or chemical properties of the MOFs. And we try to show like which metal type can be good the best materials, what type of lattice they have. But obviously uh, it was a hidden relation. We weren't able to get this relation well. So coming to today, machine learning appeared to unreveal all these hidden structure performance relations. So since 2020, we start to see some high throughput computational screening combined with machine learning. And I kind of think that this is going to be the feature of MOFs. So we um, ask if machine learning can meet with metal organic frameworks for gas storage and gas separation. And today you can see many different applications where high throughput computational screening is combined with machine learning, not only for gas separation, but also for catalysis or sensing or different types of applications. So we have a lot of simulation data and machine learning can help us to understand this data. Right now, we are at that point, the accuracy is good, the time requirement is small. I'm going to show you in a few seconds that machine learning combined with computational screening can make a prediction for the gas separation performance of material like that in nanosecond. Uh, and we can screen millions of materials in a short time. This is right now where we are since the beginning of the uh, modeling history. Now, I'm going to show you one example uh, with this recent work. Uh, previously, we were using this computational screening approach. Now I have another box machine learning. We use this first uh, to understand MOF based mixed matrix membranes. Why? I have thousands, uh, let's say millions of MOFs, including the hypothetical ones hundreds of polymers. So I have many possible MOF polymer mixed matrix membrane combinations. Uh, my student who is working experimentally, she's using matrimid as the polymer and she has millions of opportunity, millions of options to choose the MOF. So how is she going to choose the best MOF filler to make a polymer based mixed matrix membrane? We can help her by performing um, MD simulations but computing gas diffusivity in millions of different MOF structures using molecular dynamics is really computationally demanding, even if you think about high performance computer clusters. So therefore, we decided to combine this machine learning approach with the molecular simulation to study 30,000 of MOF polymer combinations for six different gas separations. So normally, imagine that we would be performing uh, this number multiplied by six for six different gas separation, multiplied by two for adsorption and diffusion. This many simulation was required to unlock this many materials performance. But here, uh, we first did this uh, simulations for a certain number of MOF, and then we use machine learning to produce some models that can predict permeability of the materials. And then we uh, use these models by uh, studying unseen MOFs, which were not trained in the machine learning model. So we were able to make a large amount of prediction for a lot of uh, permeability data for a lot of uh, materials. In order to do this, uh, in order to do machine learning, you need to choose some descriptors. And we try our best to choose the simplest descriptors. When I say simplest, 
the descriptors that you can calculate very quickly or measure experimentally very quickly, like uh, percentage of the metal atoms or porosity of your material. And using these descriptors, uh, we define some models, we develop some models, and in these figures, you see the machine learning predicted gas permeability compared with the simulated gas permeability. Of course, you know, there are cases that the model is doing good. There are cases that the model is not doing good and we need to introduce new parameters to make the, to improve the model prediction. And of course, reviewer two was again there. He asked us to compare the predictions with the experiments. And this time he's very right because there are uh, a lot of different mixed matrix membranes reported in the literature. In the, in the morning, we just uh, listened to some of the mixed matrix membrane studies from the conference. So we prepared this permeability uh, figure, show the ML predicted, simulated, and experimentally measured permeability. Sometimes you see two different uh, experimental barrier because um, different research groups can make the same mixed membrane and measure different permeabilities. And of course, uh, machine is learning from the simulation, therefore uh, black and red bars are very close to each other. So I think this is a nice approach, combining screening, combining molecular simulations with machine learning to evaluate the gas separation performance of systems, which are really difficult to simulate, uh, especially at the atomic level. So in this story, we actually didn't discover a new material, right? We, we studied already existing systems. So the next step is to discover a new material using molecular simulations. Now, in the last two, three minutes, I'm going to talk about this. So in um, with collaboration with Professor Uzun, we have been preparing ionic liquid incorporated metal organic frameworks. So I'm not the experimentalist and I may uh, fall short in explaining those, but obviously ionic liquids smaller than the pore size of the metal organic framework can be incorporated into the cage of the moth so that you can reduce the pore size and you can also change the chemistry, the environmental uh, chemistry of the pore. In this way, by changing the pore size, you can selectively capture one gas molecule over another. This is what we do in the last six years. But the question is, I have 10 to the power 12 different types of ionic liquids, millions of moths. So we don't know how to choose the best combination of ionic liquid moth to make these experiments. We reported several different composites, but actually we did all of them by trial and error. We were just trying different ionic liquids with different moths. And if we get a good separation performance, we were publishing it. If not, we were continuing to find a new material purely by trial and error. So we said that let's combine this high throughput computational screening approach with the uh, experimental uh, work to find a new material. So we started with a small kind of small number of ionic liquids around a thousand. And then we did some DFT calculations, uh, COSMARAS calculations to find the ionic liquids that have high solubility for CO2. And then we define a few types of composites to study with the GCMC simulations and identified the composite showing the highest selectivity for CO2 nitrogen separation. So the ionic liquid was chosen as a result of this computation and the MOF was already set. Uh, we specifically want to uh, study with a robust and uh, kind of large pore material UIO 6 to 6. And after we uh, found this composite from the computational study combining DFD and GCMC, we went to do experimental parts and with the wet impregnation, we inserted this ionic liquid into the mouth. And after characterizing it, we measured the uh, CO2, methane and nitrogen absorption isotherms. And when we compare them with our previously performed GCMC simulations, 
except nitrogen at low pressure, we found a kind of good agreement. So the selectivity that we predicted from the high throughput computational screening was actually validated by the experiments. Making uh, using this approach, we were able to improve the selectivity of YoYo 66 from 30s up to 100 at uh, regular pressures. And at low pressure region, we were even able to see very, very high selectivities because obviously nitrogen was not able to enter into the pores of the composite. So because of the ionic liquid, and we were able to find a really very highly selective, almost complete CO2 selective over nitrogen uh, composite using this computational uh, approach. So I think now we are at the point that this time we don't have machine learning. I think now uh, the next step is to actually integrate the machine learning algorithm also in this and study not thousands, but millions of ionic liquids and change the uh, MOF. As I said here, the MOF was constant VIO 66 and try to see how other combinations will actually uh, come up. So that's going to be the final uh, result slide. I just want to say a few words before we finish. Um, to here, I try to give you a brief summary of what we were doing 10 years ago with the simulations, and now what are we doing with the simulations? So obviously, simulation theory and experiments should go hand to hand in order to understand MOFs for gas separation. As I said previously, um, several uh, speakers in the conference talk about force fields, charge assignment methods, flexible structures, MOFs with functional groups or defects. We are very thankful to all simulators who develop these approach so that we could use them in our high throughput screening without their efforts, without the other computational groups, uh, we wouldn't be able to perform the high throughput computational screening. And of course, there are several issues that I don't mention. For example, for the mixed matrix membranes, uh, for the stability and compatibility between the MOF and the polymer are very important. Again, great groups uh, will give talk about this in the following day. And I certainly believe that uh, sharing data is very important, especially when you have the machine learning approach, because otherwise we do same type of calculation on the same type of material. So we should somehow open the data and accumulate it so that others can see, reuse or improve it. And finally, uh, I really wanted to choose one application and focus on this so that we can see the history of this about gas separation, because I guess this is the the most major field uh, for the MOS. But whatever I told here in terms of high throughput computational screening and machine learning, they could be applied to different applications from sensing to wastewater treatment. And I hope that we will see these applications in the future. So again, I would like to thank to the alumni. The other reason that I'm so sad that I missed the conference, every single MOF conference was like for us, uh, a kind of alumni meeting for my research group. As you can see, almost all my uh, PhD students are now located in uh, Europe, some in USA, in Canada, but most others are in Europe. So I'm sending my greetings to all of them. Again, I would like to thank to everyone uh, for this nicely organized uh, conference. If you want to see more details about the um, Mixed Matrix Membrane Modeling, my PhD student Hilal has a poster. If you want to see about the ILMOF composites, uh, which I wasn't able to provide the experimental details since I really don't know those details, Hassan Jam will be there with his poster. So I would like to thank again for uh, listening and for being in the online meeting with me. I also would like to thank again Professor Snur for his introduction. So in, in my office, I found my PhD box those are the papers that I published at that time, printed from uh, Professor Snur's paper. So it's labeled as Snur's paper. I, I kept reading his work uh, to come to those days. So I would like to thank everyone uh, for being in the online session. Thank you, Professor Keskin. Um, there was applause here in the audience. I don't know if you could hear it at home. Um, yes. are, are there questions? Yeah, please go to the, the microphone.
Hi, Keskin. I don't know if you can hear me. That was a wonderful talk. So the one thing that is missing in your high throughput and which I generally have a worry about, especially when you're kind of like looking for high performance move in gas separation, is water stability. And I think that's something that I don't know, probably you or anyone in the hall could probably figure out a way of modeling uh, water stability, especially in machine learning and all of this. So I don't know if probably you have an idea on how we can probably start doing that and probably incorporate that in our ML analysis, mm -hmm. because there was a fear that you could find a very high performing MOF, which experimentally, yeah, is high performing, but not water stable. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So we actually try to address this problem. What we do in our high throughput computational screening is that if we want to study the effect of uh, humidity, we first take all the MOF database and compute the Harris constants using Monte Carlo for water. Uh, we then categorize the materials as hydrophobic MOFs and hydrophilic MOFs. How do we do this? Experimentally, we know this uh, Harris constant for ZIP8, and we took ZIP8 as a kind of reference. So if the Harris constant of the material is higher than ZIP8, we think that this is a kind of hydrophilic material. So we ignore them in the further computational screening approach. We only focus on the hydrophobic MOFs, which don't like uh, water. The reason that we only calculate the Harris constant for water rather than simulating it with the mixture because equilibration of mo water molecule in the simulations is not easy. So calculating Hermes constants at the beginning and only focusing on the hydrophobic MOFs is a good idea. This is one approach. The other approach, let's say that we measure CO2 nitrogen mixture absorption and we want to consider wet flue gas. In this case, we then perform CO2 nitrogen water mixture, a real wet flue gas mixture for the top MOFs that we identify. And we try to see what's happening. So in fact, Several of the MOFs, as you predicted, can lose their high selectivity when water comes into play. Then we try to focus on the materials which keep their high selectivity, even the water is in the mixture. Um, those are the two approaches that we consider for studying uh, water effect. Other questions? When you do your simulations for the polymer MOF mixtures, which structural models you are using? How do you get them? You are right. I wasn't clear at that point. When we study the polymer, actually, we are not modeling the polymer. We are taking the experimental gas permeability data of the polymer from the literature. We are simulating only the MOF and computing its permeability at the atomic level. Then we combine the permeability of the MOF filler and experimentally reported permeability of the polymer using a theoretical permeation model like Maxwell or uh, Brugman model. So we don't do the polymer simulation, but Professor Maurin's groups, as far as I uh, follow, they are doing also the polymer uh, modeling at the atomic level. Uh, Professor Jiang's group also do atomistic modeling of MOF polymer interface. So we don't do, but uh, other researchers do the uh, atomistic modeling. I will ask the last question. Um, with the ionic liquids in the MOFs, if the pores are really big, I would imagine the adsorption properties are very similar to the, the pure ionic liquid. Mm -hmm. Do you see examples where there's a, a synergistic effect and putting the ionic liquid in the MOF is actually better than either the MOF by itself or the ionic liquid by itself? Yeah, so uh, again, one thing that I didn't explain in the presentation, not all ionic liquids go into the pores of the MOF. Experimentally, we see that some ionic liquids are covering the external surface area of the MOF, especially if the MOF is hydrophobic and the ionic liquid is hydrophilic. When we combine them, ionic liquid doesn't go into the pore, but it makes a very, very thin layer around the MOF's external surface. In those cases, we see what you say, the synergic effect, 
and the uh, adsorption capacity of this composite for CO2 is higher than the solubility of the bulk ionic liquid and the adsorption capacity of the pristine moss. But if it goes into the pore, we always see a reduced CO2 uptake compared to the pristine moss. And as you said, it more acts like the bulk ionic liquid. Hey, thank you. 